So I replaced the charge pipes because they were leaking bad. And you can see all the oil. Gorgeous. The first one I put in. And it was extremely hard to get in. Perfect. What's swinging gang? What's swinging auto lust gang? And I know I look a hot mess because I was doing some summer cleaning, trying to get bugs out of my uh, radiator on the X6M, and I found something horrible. Stay tuned. Okay, so we in the engine bay. I got the whole air box off. You see the engine cover over here the front of the air box over here and the entire air box is right here the dining air box so i took that off to clean down in there to get the rocks out of my radiator condenser and uh transmission cooler down there and when I was taking off the pipes to get it off, this inlet here was just wiggling around, wiggling around. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. I'm gonna show you what it looked like. If you see this piece here, this piece here is supposed to be permanently connected to this piece here, but it's not. I'm gonna pick some up because this is super oily game. So you can see it's like, uh, how can I put this? I'll put this right in the camera. You can see there's a little groove in there. And what sits in that little groove is this back piece here on the back of the inlet. And it's supposed to stay in one piece. Like, let me pick this one up. Like this turbo inlet, the passenger side, which is working obviously is it still in one piece if you can see down in there that green o-ring in the turbo right here that's what seals up against this turbo inlet so the air that comes out of your air box goes into the uh, air box sucks through the filter and goes through this turbo inlet and right into the intake of the turbo you know spins around and comes out up here and I'm gonna talk about why my charge pipes are missing soon and it comes out the turbo outlet directly into the intercooler and goes and goes down through the intercooler cools down goes into the throttle body and then goes into the engine from the bottom you know everything on the BMW is reversed well the V8s is reversed so everything that should be on the side of the engine in the traditional engine is on the top and everything that should be on the top is on the side so our air intake is on the bottom of the engine not on the top the exhaust headers are on the top of the engine, which sit up under the turbos. I ordered both of these and I ordered upgraded charge pipes. And the charge pipe on the X5M, X6M, you see they're tiny, literally, like they're about three inches long and 2.25 inches in diameter. I'm gonna put the links for the new charge pipes. And I'm gonna show you how I replaced the charge pipes because they were leaking bad. And you can see all the oil behind the turbos. Thank God, uh, Pure Turbos are rebuilding these and, and uh, cleaning them and making them stage two. This is why I got rid of the old charge pipe gang. Look how nasty they is. And if you can, I'm gonna move the new charge pipes out of the way so you can see that. You see that rip? It's damaged right up under the clamp. And these were the clamps that holds them here. And these are the new clamps will hold the new charge pipe. Big, big different. And those are the new charge pipes, just to give you an early look. But yeah, this is rubber. You guys know what happens with rubber when oil gets on it. It starts to degrade the rubber extremely fast. So these things are super soft. And it, it, I mean, it's almost, you can like break pieces of it off. You know, that's how bad these charge pipes are. And I bought these from silicone intakes. I'm gonna leave the links down in the description for these. The clamps here, cause you need four. And the uh, link for the new turbo inlets. 
a few moments later. The uh, turbo inlets just came in and I'm gonna show you guys the new turbo inlets and we finna get this engine back put together. And also, I don't, if you don't uh, follow my Instagram, go ahead and follow my Instagram. I'm gonna leave a uh, link right here and it's a link down in the description because I post a lot of stuff on my Instagram about this build that I don't show on the videos. So for instance, you won't be able to see, let me flip this camera around. A lot of these support bars that I took off the engine when I was doing this, I took to get it powder coated candy red to match the wrap on the truck, you know. And uh, I got another big surprise. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, so I'm going to leave it where it's at and we just going to get this stuff put on. But when the new parts get in, I'm going to show you guys exactly what the surprise is and why I'm getting all of this stuff uh, powder coated candy red including the intercooler bodies, just not these intercoolers. And when my new intercoolers come in, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. But let's get these parts put on. I got the new uh, turbo inlet pipes here, two of them, lifetime warranty FCP Euro. I'm gonna leave the link down in the description where you can get these turbo inlet uh, hoses, well pipes, and these 200 PSI burst protection silicone and aramid fiber reinforced uh, hoses to go between your turbo and your intercooler, your turbo outlet and your intercooler. So let's get these parts put on guys. Alright gang, we got this side on. I caught hell getting it on. Had to use a thumb drive and everything to get that lower bolt right down in here with that. Yeah, to get that lower uh bolt in down at the bottom. It's super tight. So if you don't have one of these little little ratchets or a thumb driver, you better have a hell of a wa uh, a, a, a wobble ratchet set. Turbo inlets are in. Now it's time to do the hard part. I don't advise anybody to put these turbo inlets in at home, unless you want to be pushing your car for cliff, because they definitely not easy to put in. A few moments later. All right, gang, so I finally got the charge pipes in and I did them off camera. And the reason I did them off camera is because it's one of the hardest things I had to do. And I'm gonna I'm show you why it was so hard. And it doesn't have to be hard, but I made it hard for myself. So I'm gonna show you so you don't make this mistake. Let me flip this camera around. So this was the first one I put in here. Hold on a minute, let me get this camera good. Okay, there we go. This was the first one I put in and it was extremely hard to get in. And the reason why, because it was too long. So I had to cut about a quarter inch off of the end while it was on there. And I used this little lip here as a guide and just cut all the way around it, turned the, I turned the uh, coupler on the pipe. 
and cut it all the way around. This one I cut before I even put it on. I just used this to set on the pipe and marked it around, you know, as a stencil and cut it off. As you can see, they're the same size, same thickness. And then they went on perfectly. You know, and I used a flathead screwdriver, one with the fat blunt tip, nothing sharp. And I used the Phillips head screwdriver. Once I squeezed the end on the turbo, then it was easy to push, like ball, up, ball it up, push it down and work it around the intercooler top. But I have everything on now and it, it looks a hell of a lot better. It looks a lot more, I guess I would say sporty. So I'm gonna get these clamps put on and then I can, uh, I'm going to actually pick the powder coated rods up today, engine support rods, well engine base support rods. Cause I have to put those on before I even put the air box back on. So I'm just getting back from picking the powder coated parts up gang and they are gorgeous. Like I told you before, if you follow my IG, you would already seen them. But now I'm gonna let you see them on video. So let me flip this camera around. And there they are, gorgeous. Candy apple red. And they're gonna look so nice in the engine bay. Like I told you, the bar goes here and a bar goes there and there. But the only problem is you won't be able to see this bar too much because it's gonna be covered up by the Dyna intake. But I got something coming in the mail that's gonna solve that whole entire problem. Cause I want you to be able to see the Candy Red intercoolers, charge pipes, and the engine support bars. So let's get these bars put on. There she is, gang. You can't tell me that's not gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Let me get a little back, far back shot. That is gorgeous. And the reason I didn't tighten down all the hardware is because I painted the bolts black and they're not cured all the way yet. So I'm not gonna tighten anything down because I'm not driving the car anyways until I drop it off uh, for to get the engine built. So I'm gonna let these sit overnight and then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna tighten everything down and show you guys what it looks like with everything the way it is. Like I told you, this bar is mostly gonna be covered up by the Dyna intake, but we have something coming in that's gonna solve that problem. So that's a surprise so 
it's gonna be overnight for me but a couple seconds for you guys so let's do it so you know I couldn't help myself gang I was supposed to wait for tomorrow to tighten up the bolts but I said damn that and I tighten them up anyways so let me let you see what it looks like So that's the full engine bay. And as you can see, you can't see most of the candy red. Well, you can. If you want that minimalistic look, you know, just a little pop in the engine bay, then that might work for you. You know, you can see it over here on the mounting plates for the uh, air box. You can see the rod, support rods back there on the back. But that's not good enough so what I have coming gonna get rid of all of this right here everything the dining air box this piece here everything got to go you know and I don't want to ruin the surprise it's just as good as the dining and I don't want to get rid of my dining but I am gonna get rid of my dining you know so if you guys know someone who wants to purchase this dining air box you know uh when it get when i drop the car off to get the engine build uh to get the engine built i'm gonna be removing it so that'll be probably in a in about a week or so you know if you guys know anybody who wants this dining air box kit i probably sell it for eight hundred dollars you know uh 830 ship you know 30 dollars a cover the shipping it's about eleven hundred twelve hundred dollars for it so eight hundred dollars that's a good price i mean and it's pretty much brand new i cleaned the filters not too long ago and i changed the filters from uh the blue oil to the red oil because the red oil is easy to get to but you just want to make sure you rent wash and rinse your hands uh after messing with that oil that oil is some nasty stuff the blue and the red but yeah, if you guys know anyone looking for something like this, I got this air box for sale for eight eight hundred eight hundred picked up eight thirty ships anywhere in the U.S. So, but yeah, when the new air box get in, gang, it, it, it's gonna be gorgeous. Cause I told you I'm doing candy red everything, everything, and I can't wait to show you the main reason I'm getting rid of this air box. It's gonna be crazy. So like, share, and subscribe, and auto lust out.